Welcome. In this video, we're going to start with how to create a new catalog in Lightroom 5. Now, if you've downloaded my uh, assets for this particular project, you can point all this to that while, while we're working here. Uh, let's go ahead and start by going File and New Catalog. Now, a catalog is going to house the um, the data about our pictures as well as maybe some preview thumbnails of the pictures. It does not hold the pictures themselves. Also, you can have your catalog separate from the actual locations of the pictures themselves. For example, if you wanted to have a uh, laptop and work elsewhere, well, you could at your home or at your business have the laptop connect to an external hard drive and use the external hard drive to actually house the files, but the catalog would be on the laptop itself and it would simply point to that hard drive. So what we're going to do is create a folder uh, for our catalog and mine is going to be in here uh, in my My Picks folder and we're going to call this a Lightroom Lesson. All right. And the Lightroom Lesson folder will cause it to close and reopen Lightroom. And then it's going to ask me to import. And this is where this is going to read the pictures from wherever location I'm asking it to read from and then place uh, those previews into the computer into the catalog that I can then see the the images so let's go ahead and click the import button and we're gonna point it to my external hard drive which is called working so yours will come up and whichever location you've placed my assets this is where I'm wanting you to point so you're gonna go to working and here I have my working folder now you might not have as many pictures as I do, um, but it is showing a bunch of pictures. You also want to make sure that include subfolders is checked. If it's not, uh, you'll see nothing. If you check it, you'll then see um, a bunch of pictures inside. Now what we want to do is understand some of the differences in the top here. Uh, this import dialog box can copy the files as a DNG, which Basically, if you are filming in camera raw, you'll have NEF files or RW2 files or a lot of different um, types of raw files out there. What this would do is it can convert it to Adobe's DNG, digital negative file, which is like having a raw image uh, as, as like a universal raw image. So um, you could also just tell it to copy. And by the way, whenever you click these things, see copy is DNG, copy, you get a uh, destination popping up over here. So it'll actually create folders and, and ask you where you want to put it. Okay. Uh, this is how we'll add uh, files to our drive from like a, um, a USB or an SD card. There's also... Um, move which will actually move them you could use this um, if you were transferring your entire library for example um, but we're gonna stick to add and we're gonna tell it to simply add now let's say I copied some files to this um, working hard drive uh, later on we could tell it to just do new photos so it would check you know what it had looked at before and then create new photos now, in my case, I haven't imported yet, so I'm going to do all photos. Now, over here, there's also a file handling panel. And if it's not expanded, you can expand it. And it's going to create previews. Now, when creating previews, the previews will be there on your screen, whether you have your um, source drive, your source pictures connected or not. And you have different choices of which size previews you want to build. You could build really small ones. Um, embedded and sidecar so that's going to um, create even the, the, the actual 
XMP file, for example, next to it. Uh, standard size in one to one. One to one means if the picture's you know 4,300 pixels across, it's going to be 4,300 pixels across in the preview. Now it's not going to be as big because it's a preview. Um, the file will be copied to or created in your catalog folder set, but you have to realize that it will be a little smaller because it's not a you know the full raw image. It'll be um, imagine like a JPEG of the full raw image. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it on standard, which will uh, create previews that are, you know, I don't know, like 1,400 pixels across. Smaller, obviously. You also have this apply during import, and if you uh, check through that, you can actually tell it to create all of them into black and white, for example. Um, you can add metadata, so like if you knew you took all the pictures that you're about to import, you could create a metadata template here under the new option, um, add in uh, those details about um, who made it. You could also add in keywords. Now, because this is a uh, large set of lots of folders here and they've been taken over time, I think I took pretty much all of these. Um, and you can add keywords if you want. You can um, say what they are. Obviously, these are all different subject matters, so I'm not going to put any keywords in. So I'm going to leave all that blank at the moment. Now, there's one last thing I want to talk about is the build smart previews. Smart previews are a preview that is not as big as a one-to-one, -one, but you can edit them and make changes to the picture even when the picture is not online. Uh, it kind of adds a little bit of data to it. Now, we're going to be looking at that later, so we're going to turn that off for now. And anyway, what this is going to do is just simply add photos to my catalog without moving them. So the files are still on my drive, previews will be created, but I'm just adding them to my catalog. Now, this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to tell it to import, and you'll see uh, this will come up across the screen, and then it'll generate previews, which will also take some time as well. And we'll come back later for that video.